If you've researched home battery storage systems, you've definitely seen the term plug and play to indicate ease of installation. While the new Simplify 6.6 .6 home battery launched by Briggs & Stratton might be even simpler than the cliche, the company is touting a wire-free design that simply clicks a battery stack into place in minutes. Here to make the pitch is Sequoia Cross, VP of Energy Storage with Briggs & Stratton. Thanks for taking the time, Sequoia. Let's start by addressing the issues of typical home energy storage system installations. After Briggs & Stratton acquired Simplify in 2021 and your combined teams were R&Ding new ideas, you know, what were you specifically looking to solve or improve upon? Yeah, so Simplify was founded over a decade ago. We were one of the first companies to really work with lithium ferrophosphate or LFP battery technology and wanted to expand our knowledge and technical understanding of the chemistry from what we were doing, which was portable packs into more residential stationary power applications for renewable energy. So as we have gone through this journey as a company and with this new product, we've worked with a lot of installers hand by hand. We've heard what they like, what they don't like. And so for us, we wanted to have a product that was very easy for installers to install, to size, and really cut down on the time and some of the errors that can naturally occur in the field. And what are some of those specific pain points that uh, cause workmanship errors or maybe just, uh, you know, some of the things you were looking to specifically design out of the system to uh, ease that installation process more and, you know, avoid issues? If you go back in time, everything had terminals and wiring and people were having to make sure that their wire gauge, their wire lengths were all equal sizes so that we kept balance within a stack of batteries or an array of batteries in an installation. And that can lead to complications. And sometimes we'd even see reverse polarity where people will just have all black wires, for instance, and that oh wait where am i at in my system so by looking at ways that we could make it easier for the installer everything just clicks into place you, you're not worrying about wiring anymore and and so that's one of the major things safety is another um having batteries that can scale in meet the requirements of code um and some of the residential applications. And that's another struggle that installers have had, as well as just pairing with equipment. And the result of all that is the Simplify 6.6 .6 home battery featuring this rapid stack connector. Could you explain a little bit about that rapid stack connector, uh, how that works, and then just kind of walk me through the full installation? It's a major shift and change for us as a company. So originally we were creating lithium batteries that could be lead acid drop-in replacements. So the form factor and look and feel of them is very much like a lead acid battery. So with the rapid stack connector, all of our power and communications is coming through a single connector. And that connector is embedded into each battery, but it's also embedded into the base. An installer has a choice depending on how they want to mount the battery. So they can either store, start with a floating wall mount or a floor base. Either of those options are very simple to install and align. And then we have a wall mount bracket. So the wall mount bracket is included with every battery. It's part of the battery um, and it's self aligning. So you start with a vertical bracket, which snaps into either of the bases. And then you have a horizontal bracket that creates an alignment between um, the battery once it's put onto the base and as they stack up. And that provides additional security for the battery once it's mounted to the wall. So once you get your wall mount bracket in place, you can assemble a three battery set or 20 kilowatt hours in under five minutes. So it's just a matter of stacking the battery onto the base and then putting the additional two batteries in the PDU on top. So with the rapid stack connector, all your positive and negative connections come into place. And it's a very simple ins install for customers. You just run your home run, your positive and negative to your inverter's DC bus and your comms cable to the inverter or to the energy track gateway. Yeah, so so it sounds like the, the slowest part of the installation is just kind of the wall mounting setting up stuff but the actual battery installation it just kind of like 
and then you know you're out in a couple minutes our team has done it in three and a half minutes so the battery system does not include an internal inverter though like others do in the market and I'm curious why you opted for an external inverter. If you look at an all-in-one solution where the inverter and battery are paired together or inside a single enclosure, you're having to scale both power and energy capacity together at the same time. And if you wanna expand, you have to jump to another, say 13 kilowatt hours, but you're also expanding the power output. So by decoupling these two pieces of equipment, you can have a varying degree of energy storage available to the customer and different power requirements. You can also do the reverse. So if someone has very short duration and higher power requirements, you can have a larger inverter and a smaller battery bank. So it allows for wider variety. We can customize systems for what customers really need. Um, and we can also reduce costs that way by not having to duplicate power equipment that isn't necessary in a system. Okay, that makes a, a ton of sense. Are there are there any trade-offs or any things to note that, you know, maybe or maybe something we're slowing down in the installation process by uh, not having that inverter be an internal inverter? Very often those systems that have integrated inverters are also requiring still to be AC coupled to something. They're still requiring other power equipment, either microinverters that are on the roof, or even another string inverter that's tied to it. So there's still complexity, even when you're looking at these all-in-one solutions, you're not always comparing an apples to apples comparison. And I think the flexibility allows for people to pin, like really get hone in on a price point that makes sense. It is actually the best thing for the end customer. So then thinking of external inverters, you know, what are my inverter options? Do you have specific uh, partnerships in place or closed loop systems to, to note? As a battery company and creating agnostic relationships, this battery will still pair with any lithium supporting inverter that's on the market without comms. We do have closed loop communications with Solark and with the Briggs and Stratton inverter. Uh, so both of those inverters, again, are plug and play. So we've tried to take the complexity of dip switches and different things that other batteries have to create that level of communication. And we're embedding it all into the software and firmware of our battery. So it really becomes just plugging a cable into the can of the inverter and the can of the battery. And that's it. So let's move on to the battery specs. Each battery delivers 6.65 kilowatt hours of capacity, and three can be stacked for 19.95 kilowatt hours. Uh, why those base numbers? Why the 6.65? You know, you, I see like from five to 10 kind of like uh, round numbers, and this is uh, very not round. I'm curious how you landed on that base level number. For us, 6.65 allowed us to get a three battery stack as close to 20 kilowatt hours as possible. And when you see other batteries that are on the market that are marketed as five kilowatts, kilowatt hours, they're actually 5.12. And that's an important designation when you start looking at the total capacity ratings of different batteries as it applies to code. And FPA 855 is creating constraints in terms of how much battery capacity can be within each stack. And 20 kilowatt hours happens to be that magic number. So as you mentioned, we're at 19.95 kilowatt hours per stack, um, three batteries that can be stacked in, you know, less than five minutes. So it's a very simple and easy way for us to create these capacity limits and then be able to scale multiple stacks together meet the requirements for 40 kilowatt hours in a utility space, 80 kilowatt hours in a garage or outdoors mounted on your wall. And these numbers have come up time and time again in the industry um, as we navigate code and different restrictions that are happening. Simplify seemed to be the first battery brand that was really promoting cobalt-free lithium batteries, specifically your LFP uh, chemistry, you know, way back when I kind of started at Solar Builder. And I'm wondering, um, you know, with the, the market kind of catching up on that and there being a lot of LFP batteries, you know, are, are there differences among LFP batteries? And with that kind of being a, a, a safety note, uh, is there anything else in the home battery system itself that offers additional kind of like levels of, uh, of safety assurances? 
we navigated UL 9540 very early with some of our previous products and we're able to understand the process. When we go through our 9540A tests, fire safety testing for our batteries, we're able to prove the efficacy of the chemistry, the safety of the chemistry by not having unmitigated thermal runaway explosions, fire risk. Uh, we were and still are one of the only residential batteries that can be installed in New York City because we understand LFB, we understand the safety of the technology and the products. In addition, this battery has the ability to charge at lower temperatures than any of the batteries we've had before. Uh, so that is based on that chemistry and different modifications to the chemistry that are now allowing us to charge this battery at 14 degrees Fahrenheit um, or negative 10 degrees Celsius. We're also able to discharge at its first full discharge rate at negative 20 degrees Celsius. But on top of that, we're coupling our BMS firmware and software, as I mentioned before, to curtail charge rate and extend the lifespan of the battery. These batteries have uh, 6,000 cycles at 96% uh, depth of discharge. So again, that's an improvement of our previous batteries as well. Yeah, so I guess you've mentioned it, but it, I guess maybe it didn't dawn on me quite enough that the ease of installation isn't just about speed and uh, simplicity, but the that's part of the safety assurances as well. Everything you've built at the rapid stack connector is something that is now not a problem uh, down the road for um, you know for a workmanship error of some kind. It does, and you know it, it eliminates exposed terminals. You don't have maybe a wrench or a tool that can fall and create a connection between the terminals and short out. So you also mentioned the uh, 6,000 cycles at 96% depth of discharge. And that, you know, those seem like definitely different numbers. And I remember hearing before, how, you know, how much of an improvement is this over your previous batteries? So it's interesting because we're saying 96% depth of discharge. At 90% depth of discharge with our previous batteries, it was 5,000 cycles. Wow. Yeah. I, I don't know. That seems pretty significant to me. We talk a lot about our 10,000 cycles at 80% depth of discharge, and that's been the gold standard. For us, we wanted to show that this battery has been designed to be cycled deeper. If you were to cycle the battery to 80% depth of discharge, you can expect that the cycle life will be longer. You will get more cycles out of the battery, but most people are trying to leverage every ounce of energy that they can out of their battery. They're designing systems that are closer and closer to what they need. And we felt like 96% was a better number to put forward in terms of where the market is going and how batteries are being used. Something I'm understanding more and more about these uh, home battery systems is that the even you know under UL 9540 listings, not not all listings are created equal. Not all testing results are e created equal. Installation parameters are different among uh, battery systems depending on testing results. Uh, I'm curious if you could explain a little bit about you know going through UL 9540A testing and if there's any notable uh, limitations or benefits of the 6.6 uh, .6 in particular. We have HJs that at this time they're not necessarily looking at a UL 9540A or UL 9540 certification and making decisions. So what we've done is create a product that adheres to the NFB 855. And with the regulatory environment, we are you know, sticking to our 20 kilowatt hour stacks. Um, we're respective of what the HJ's decisions are in terms of spacing and making sure that as a company, we're always putting forward our test reports and the results of those test reports publicly. We think that that's really important to create transparency because you're right, not all of the test reports are equal and not everyone shares them. One thing that's a benefit of having click in the place connectors like this is you're eliminating wire runs, conduit sizing, conduit fill, are, you know, is everything inside a conduit, which to an AHJ is very invisible in some ways, are they doing that right? And you can get heat and you can get other things that can become failure points in a system. 
um, when you're putting batteries together. And I think by having a connector that is UL rated, uh, that has met all the certifications as a connector, as being able to carry the current it does, clicking into place and eliminating resistance issues at terminals. Um, are things wired tight enough? Do they torque it down properly? All of these things can contribute to inefficiencies in the system. And by controlling all of that with a connector, you get away from that. You've got your comms there all wired properly. You're not having to do different pinouts and make sure that, oh, the comms are working, that you're getting the right data, that it's coming through to the inverter or to a gateway. So just as we're wrapping up here for an interested installer out there, where can they go to find more? Definitely visit energy.briggsandstratton.com. There you can find all of the spec sheets and information on the 6.6 and our full line of products. In addition, we have a where to buy page. So if you're looking for a dealer, installer, or one of our mini distributors, you can reach out there. Uh, you can also reach out to us directly. So if you're looking for, for more information, we have forms on our website that you can complete and we'll have somebody get back to you right away. Awesome. Well, this has uh, been uh, very informative, and I want to thank you for taking the time to make the pitch today, Sequoia. Yeah, thank you. We're really excited about it and look forward to talking with you more.